talking about, and he, he was there with Dan's cousin, John Settler, uh, praying with him a little before he passed away, or maybe the day he passed away. He was down there several times, so I don't know which one we ran into him with, but um, I appreciate a pastor that will go and pray for people, that will pray for their family, that care about people. And I really appreciate the fact that he was there to be able to be there with them. Mm -hmm. I would ask, please, to keep Sarah Minor and Lewis, uh, however you know him. Some people know him by tugboat. Some people just know him by Lou. But keep them in your prayers because it's just a matter of time. And Sarah will be going to be with the Lord. But Lewis is going to need a lot of support. And a lot of help 
in the days ahead. Um, his family was all there with him yesterday, and I plan on stopping by there on the way back home this afternoon. But I appreciate pastors. There was a pastor from a Baptist church that was pastor of one of her brothers that came by the hospital, or not the hospital, but the home yesterday, and had prayer with us for her. A pastor. A pastor is called by God. A pastor is called by God. Now, the pastors are not the only ones called, but the pastor is called to a specific job, a specific purpose. Not only is he called by God, but he's anointed by God. And if the pastor is what he is supposed to be, then he is going to be preaching the word. That's what we're told to do. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. And we would all like to stop the verse right there. Do you know what the rest of the verse says? Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort. With all long suffering and doctrine. He's supposed to be teaching you some things. Yeah. Now, brother, have you got this one turned off? You want to? Yeah, just shut that one down or I'm going to be screaming in it. Um, it's down. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate sound people too. I should have said, I said sound, could have said sound man that time because there is a man. But uh, I like the people that can control things and make it work and make it good. Okay? I really do. I really appreciate all this music up here this morning. I think I've said that already, but I want to say it again. Preach the word. That's what the pastor is called to do. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So what does the word pastor indicate? It's already been said this morning. I am just amazed at how God puts things together. Yeah. Nobody said, you use this scripture, you use that scripture, you preach this, you preach. Nobody told me because if they had, I just said, I'm sorry, you got the wrong person. Because right. <laughs> I want to listen to what he says Amen. and do what he says. That's right. Because that's where I'm going and that's who I've got to answer to. Right. So we preach the word. A pastor from the word of God, the biblical teaching indicates that it's one who is over the flock. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Now, you might think, well, we're not a bunch of sheep. We act more like it than you think we do. Yeah. I was pastoring one church and they did a pastor appreciation one day. And they all came in and every time I said something, they said, bah. The whole church. Well, I'm not talking about being that kind of sheep. But we are the sheep of his pasture. And he places a pastor over us to lead us, to guide us, to train us. That word doctrine thing there that everybody doesn't want to have to do anything with. To train us. He does all of these things. It's to protect the flock. To feed the flock. Yeah. Now wait a minute. I had somebody leave a church one time and said, well, the pastor wasn't feeding me. When's the last time the pastor picked up a spoon and put food in your mouth? That's what I thought. You see, there's some things we're supposed to do for ourselves. And if you have got a pastor and you think they're not feeding you, then you need to pick up the book for yourself and feed yourself. Amen. Then maybe you can support the pastor to the point that he can do a little bit better at feeding you. Yeah. But if he's a man of God, he's going to be studying the word of God. He's going to be reading the word of God. He's going to be breathing the word of God. He's going to be preaching the word of God. And he's going to be giving you what God gives him to give you. Amen. Yeah. Jesus said to Peter, you, you remember the story? Or do I need to tell all the stories? Peter had denied Jesus three times. And then he went back out and went fishing. 
Oh, he was sorry for what he had done. He went out and wept bitterly. He repented bitterly. But then Jesus said, go tell my disciples and Peter. Go tell my disciples and Peter that I want them to meet me. Because he wanted Peter to know that he was still included in the group. I haven't got time to sideline on this, but there's a whole lot of people that messed up a whole lot of times in God's word, and they still was used by God. Can somebody say amen? amen. amen. A whole lot of people messed up a whole lot of times, but God used them tremendously. The apostle Paul was one of the biggest. He was killing Christians. Can't sideline there either. But Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, well, sure, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my sheep. Now, you know, he said, feed my lambs. How many of you, if you had your choice of which sheep to feed, would feed the lambs? I just admit it. I like the babies a whole lot better than I do those horn button, whatever. That's right. He said, feed my lambs. And then he said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. He said, feed my sheep. Now, there are sheep and there are sheep. There are sheep that are docile. There are sheep that will go along with you. There are sheep that are okay. There are sheep that, even though they stink, y'all know we stink sometimes. Even though he feeds the sheep. He said, feed my sheep. And then Jesus looks at Peter again and he says one more time, Peter, do you really, really yeah, love me? Amen. Yeah. And this time Jesus in the Greek, he uses a different word for the word love. The other two times it was the one we all like, but this time, yeah. do you really love me? And he said, Lord, you know I love you. You know everything. You know I love you. And then he says, feed my sheep. Now, that time, I think what Jesus was saying to Peter, there's going to be some that bite. There's going to be some that rebel. There's going to be some that will fight you. There's going to be some that will talk about you. There's going to be some that's going to... He wants you to feed them all. Amen. Pastor is called to feed the sheep. Amen. All the sheep. Amen. And he can't pick and choose because this has happened or that's happened or that's happened or that's happened. And I don't know anything that's happened. Don't, don't think I'm pointing fingers at anybody. But whatever may have happened, it doesn't matter. He's got to take care of the whole flock. Amen. If he's going to pastor a church, he's got to pastor everybody. So, if we're going to feed the sheep... That's what a pastor is supposed to do. The pastor who does this will, should be, we should be happy to honor him. If the pastor is giving us the word, if the pastor is teaching us, if the pastor is training us, if the pastor is trying to put the food on the table, how many of you know you can put the food on the table, but if they don't come and eat it, it doesn't do them any good? If he's any kind of a pastor, and I don't know him personally, okay? I just know of him. But I'm sure from what I've seen, I'm sure that he's this kind of pastor. If he's the kind of pastor that I think he is and I think he should be, then he's going to spend hours in the Word of God. He's going to spend hours studying the Word of God. He's going to spend hours praying and asking God, God, what is it you want me to give these people today? And then you've got to be here to get it. Come on. I'll say that again. You have to be here to get it. You can't expect the preacher to go all over the country, drive all over the countryside to your house and your house and your house and your house in order to take you the message God gives him to give to you when it's time to be at the house of God. Amen. I should have heard that louder amens than that. <laughs> so we need to honor him. One of the ways to honor your pastor is to listen to what he says. Listen to what he says and understand that it's not him that's doing the talking. It is God the Father. He is the voice of God 
to the people. Amen. That's right, yeah. He is the voice of God to the people. You can't very well hear what he's speaking if you're not present. Another way to honor your pastor is to pray for him. Yes, hallelujah. Not just him, but his wife, any other family members that he has. Because you see, they're human. I don't know if you knew that or not, but they're human. We're all human. We need to pray for them. That doesn't mean go and tell somebody, well, this is the prayer request. Pastor, did you know what Pastor so-and-so did? No. You keep it between you and God. Between you and God. And you tell God, do you know how to make your pastor the best pastor in the world? Pray for him. Back them. Do everything you can to support them and help them. Because then they'll get to be such a great preacher that some other church will come along and take them off your hands. <laughs> you don't starve them out. You don't. No. You don't do anything like that. You just build them up. You build them up. So you pray for them. Then consider the, the load that he's carrying. And do something to lighten his load. Well, now, what can I do? If you're sitting at home, can I get a show of hands? How many of you have a telephone? Almost all the hands would go up. If you're where you can't even get out and go to church anymore, you can still support the pastor. Because you can call somebody and you can tell them, listen, I want you to know that pastor is praying for you. Call somebody that doesn't know Jesus and say, hey, would you come and go with me to church Sunday? I've got a really good pastor and they can give you the word of God and, and they can help you through the trials you're going through. Yeah, right. yeah. Consider the load that he's carrying and help do something to help carry that load. It may be cleaning the church. You know, that's okay if you're running the vacuum cleaner. Is it okay if I get down where they live? I don't mean come down there. I mean... You preach what God tells you. <laughs> All right. A lot of people, they're okay with just running the vacuum cleaner. They might even be okay with just taking the trash in, in, out of the cans and taking that out and putting it in a, in a dumpster or something. But for heaven's sake, don't ask me to clean the toilet. The toilets do have to be cleaned Amen. at the house of God, just like they have to be cleaned at your house. Amen. We used to have outhouses. Yeah. They even had to be cleaned. Yeah. <laughs> right. Amen. And for everybody that's wondering how old I am, I'm 72 years old, and I've got four grown children, I've got 17 grandchildren, and I've got, I've lost count now, nine, nine or ten great-grandchildren and another one on the way in December. So that's just to get all those questions out of the way so you don't have to sit back there and worry about that. This is God's house, and we need yeah. to be willing to do whatever we can to help God's house go forward and take Amen. the load off of the pastor. Amen. When God called the pastor here, he didn't call the pastor and his wife to do all of the menial tasks. Amen. Amen. Maybe he could mow the grass, wash his car. Put some gas in his tank. Did you know that his car uses gas just like yours does? Just, just a question. The opportunities are limited only by your imagination and how to help the pastor. Yeah. Amen. When he asks you to do something at or for the church, be willing to do as you are asked. Oh, but Brother Adams, I'm sorry. I, I'm, just, I'm just not qualified to do that. I, I'm, not, I'm not trained to do that. I, I, you'll, you'll just have to get somebody else. Do you know that God's probably the one that told him to ask you? And then if God told him to ask you, then God's trying to grow you and stretch you a little right. bit to get you out of your comfort zone so you can be more for God than what you have been in the past. And if you grow from that, you grow from that, you grow from that. And God will keep growing you until you are better than you can even imagine. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. 
If it feels like you are able and you don't think you are, then pray and ask God to help you be up to the task. Maybe God is stretching you. It's part of the pastor's job to grow the individuals in the congregation, in the flock. I've got two words that I use with my children's church. They're cooperation and participation. Now, I loved these two little kids up here this morning. I know yeah. one of them was very bashful and backward, and he really liked my accordion. I know that. But just a little word of information. The church at Cherryville and the church at Davisville, when my grandmother was pastor, my daddy was running from God. God called him to preach when my grandpa passed away. He ran for seven years. I don't know how many of you know that much of the story. But my daddy made sure with grandmother's agreement, because she'd come pick us up, that we was in church. And I have a picture sitting on my desk in the office at the church there at Brookside Assembly in Hazelwood of, I think there's five of us, seven kids, on the platform <coughs> singing Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Not just the five of us. All of the kids came to the front. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, that's where God started me to be where I am today. Yeah. Because I wasn't afraid to come up front and sing. I wasn't afraid then to come up front and testify. I wasn't afraid then to come up front and do a sermonette when I was a youth. Because... God had started me out, lined up. How many of you remember the mural on the wall? Any of you remember the mural on the wall of the, the resurrection? Where, uh, and, and I'm, I'm going blank, but that's all right. I'll get around to it in a minute. Jesus is talking to Mary. And he says, Mary. I love that mural. With the empty tomb behind him. And Jesus reaching his hand down to Mary. I love that mural. But that's the picture that's on the back wall behind us kids all singing. Cooperate and participate. We sang. We participated. And that's what I have my children do today. These two words have great importance. You should cooperate with your pastor. And you should participate in the things that he feels God is leading he and his wife to do. I understand that there's a hay ride, and there's a youth get together, and there's a, of course, there's a dinner today, and you've already participated. Participate. Well, sister, I'm just a little too tired today, and I think I should just let the younger people do it. Let me ask you a question. How many of you, now I know there's several older ones in here. Some of you, I know, okay? Some of you I'm friends with, all right? But how many of you older ones would like for the younger ones to get all your blessings? I don't see any hands up. As long as I'm here, and I tell my people at Brookside this all the time, as long as I'm here, I'm going to do what I can for Jesus. Because that's the only time I've got that I can do something for him that benefits his kingdom. Because once we get to heaven, it's already done. I've got to do what I can while I'm here. Do all that you can for as long as you can with whatever you can. What did God ask Moses in the wilderness? What's that in your hand? It could be a songbook. Could be a phone. Could be a hundred dollar bill. It could be anything. But do for God whatever you can do with what you have in your hand. And for these young ones, I saw these two little ones up here. You're cute as a button. For these young ones, what have you got in your hand? You may have diapers, a diaper bag, a baby bottle. I saw somebody with one just a while ago. 
You may have those kind of things. You are in a perfect position to set the tone for the kingdom of God in your home. The Catholic Church says, give me your children until they are six years old and they will be a Catholic for life. A few of them have met Jesus and become personally acquainted with him and gone beyond what the Catholic could teach them. And I'm not here knocking churches. Please understand that. But the point is, you, as with your children, newborn, I would sing to them before they were born. I would sing to them. I would pray with them. I would talk with them. I told them stories about Jesus. They knew about David and Goliath long before they got to the Sunday school class that told them. Because that is something that you can do. You can do. God is not asking you for anything that you do not have. I'm going to say that again because I want an amen out of that. God is not asking anybody in this building for anything that you do not have. If he asks you for it, he knows that if you give it to him and use it for him, that he will supply abundantly more than you can even ask or think. Amen. Romans 13, verse 7. We studied through this just a little while back in our church. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. You should honor your pastor. Now this is not anything about Brother Adams. I want him to understand this. But you should honor your pastor even if you don't think he's the pastor for the church. Because he's in the position and in the office of pastor and God is the one who allowed him to be here. Now, I believe he's a good pastor. I believe he's a good pastor. He's got a good wife. I know her a little bit better. I know a little bit about him. But this one thing I know, if you honor him, God will honor you. Amen. If I said the name Obed-Edom, does anybody know what I'm talking about? I know Brother Slade does. Obed-Edom. David was trying to move the Ark of the Covenant. And he put it on a cart. And of course, Uzziah reached over and touched the cart and died because God struck him dead because he didn't respect the anointing that was on the Ark of the Covenant. And they took the Ark aside into Obed-Edom's house. And Obed-Edom was blessed just because the Ark was there. But if you read a little further, and I just did this week, you find out that Obed-Edom then was one of them that was at the temple. Later, serving God, helping with the, with the things around the altar and doing things for God. You see, he knew. He knew. He knew. What does to honor mean? To value to respect, to hold precious, to support. Your attendance shows how you value your pastor or respect him. Your cooperation shows how well you honor your pastor. Your participation shows how well you support your pastor. We should honor our pastor even more than we would honor the President of the United States or the Queen of England. Amen. Some honor an actor or a singer more than they honor their pastor. Think about it. First Timothy 5.17 Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of Double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scriptures say, if thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the labor is worthy of his reward. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. 
Please understand, I'm not calling your pastor an ox. Just because it says to that the uh, not to muzzle the ox that treads up, in other words, feed him. Feed your pastor. It's okay if you know he likes coconut cream pie to bring him a coconut pea cream pie without any special occasion. Now I don't know what all he likes. He hasn't said a word to me about what he likes. You know, I might not feel as as honored if you brought me frog legs, but if he liked frog legs and you know it, then just slip him a dish now and then. You see, God wants us to honor and he wants us to feed the minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ who is doing the work for us. I'm already out of time. If your pastor is doing a good job, then he is worthy of double honor. We should go above and beyond what we think. But our place is not to judge whether he's doing a good job or not. That's God's place. If you will do honor to your pastor, if you will give him that double honor, God will honor you and your family as well. You might ask, why should we honor our pastor? Because they watch for your soul. Do you all want to just try to make it to heaven all on your own? I'll take all the help I can get. And I'm a whole lot closer to that end of the journey than I was the first end. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is... The fruit of our lips giving thanks unto his name. But to do good and communicate, forget not. In other words, we're supposed to do good things and we're supposed to communicate with other people. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. What's the sacrifice he wants from me? Me. Praising him. Amen. Thanking him for what he's done. Praising him for what I was done. I have a rich heritage. A very rich heritage in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for that. Yeah. But I can't get gain from that unless I start telling people about it. One of the things I opened up with. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. Now we like that one that says, wives, submit yourselves to your husband. You know, we all kind of like that. The people that really gloat on that verse about the wives are supposed to obey their husband, they don't go back and read the verse before it. Right. It's the same word, submit yourselves to one another in the Lord. Amen. Exactly same word. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this says submit yourselves. Submit yourselves to the leadership of the pastor. Submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy. They're going to give an account to God. I want my pastor to be able to give account to God with joy. And not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. The not with grief, if the pastor has to turn in a report on you and it's grieving his heart, I hope you're hearing what I'm saying this morning then it is not profitable for you. I want things to be profitable for me. God has laid a heavy burden on pastors. They will give answer to God for what they preach, how they live, and what they do when no one is watching. You don't have to keep an eye on them. We read to you from 2 Timothy, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. This is required by God. So if he comes and talks to you and said, Brother, I'm really disturbed about something that, I've, that I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm seeing in your life. And this, this is really, I, I want to make sure things are right between you and God. Then accept. We read of Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Who then is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed. Even as the Lord gave to every man. Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, 
but God gave the increase. So neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. I remember a situation where I had a little bit of this difficulty. Let me put it that way. A man that I had ministered to, a man that I had talked to, a man that I had visited time and time and time and time again, and just I just wanted him to come to Jesus. Brother Adams, it was after I left that church and went on to another place that that man got in church and got saved. And I thought, God, why wouldn't you let him do it while I was here? Paul planted, Apollos watered. God gave the increase. I had to see it that way in order to understand what God was doing in the kingdom of God. I had to see it that way in order to understand it's not my kingdom. Amen. I should have heard a whole lot more amens than that. It's not my kingdom. It's Amen. not Pastor Adams' kingdom. It is the kingdom of God. And Amen. everything we do should be done for the glory of God and for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 to 29, and I'm not going to read it because I'm already out of time. I don't want anybody to, to have a, a, a diabetic coma because they haven't got their moon meal yet. The foolishness of preaching us for those who believe. The foolishness of preaching. Verse 26 says, you're calling. You're calling. You see, not only is Pastor and Mrs. called, we're all called. And it's so that no flesh should glory. If God doesn't get the glory, you don't get the prize. I'm going to say that again. If God doesn't get the glory, you don't get the prize. You've got all you're going to get right here, and I want more than what I've got right here. Can anybody say amen? amen. I want more than what I'm getting in this life. I want heaven. I want all, all the family and everybody that I can possibly get together and take with me to heaven. Hallelujah. So God gets the glory. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 6 and 7. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this. What? This treasure, it says. We have this treasure. What is this treasure? It is the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's what God has given to Brother Adams, to me, to us. We are earthen vessels. Anybody remember my Uncle Hugan? A couple of you do. My Uncle Hugan was a grave digger by trade. He dug graves with Tad Worthy over at Cherryville. But I know that he dug the dirt out of the grave. And then there were people laid to rest in the grave. But you know what the Bible says happens to those bodies? Mm -hmm. They return to the dust. So if you don't think you're dust, if you don't think you're one of those earthen vessels, you better go back and study your Bible a little bit better. Because we are earthen vessels. Amen. We are not perfect. We are not some divine thing that God has given. We right. are earthen vessels that he has put his glory into. And we're supposed to let that glory shine out. We have this treasure in earthen right. vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and Amen. not of us. Amen. Amen. Your pastor is an earthen vessel. He's a human and so are you. We all are. Until we arrive in glory with our Savior, we will make mistakes. If and or when that happens, we must pray for each other. We must pray for the pastor. We must pray for each other. In this way, we honor God first, and then we bring honor to the pastor and others of the congregation. But the pastor has the treasure Spoken of in these verses, he has the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He is not Jesus Christ, but we must honor him because he has that light in his vessel. 
God has placed him over this flock to shepherd it, much like David was the shepherd of the sheep. We too can have this treasure in our earthen vessels, but we only if we accept Christ's sacrifice for our sin and become obedient to God and his leading. Honor your pastor. Think of some way that you can do something special. And not just today. There's 365 days in a year. And every, one, every fourth year, there's a leap year, and they get free. Whatever. Find something that you can do for the glory of God. Find something that you can do to honor your pastor. I want to read Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. And with this, I will close. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, that's his own personal blood, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I believe that is the greatest benediction in the Bible. I know there's another one that's a real good one too, but I think that's the greatest one in the Bible. And I pray that you will take something from this message today. That something has touched your heart and your life. That you will see that God has placed a wonderful man and woman of God over this congregation of people. So that you can grow in God. And then whenever it comes time for him to give a report, he can give a report, a report with joy. Yeah, amen. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you so much.